morning, everyone. I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again to listening to our powerful program. That is being delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W. F. Umoye. So we're looking at Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. We're looking at verse 16. Isaiah 11, verse 16. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be led from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Notice there, there shall be a highway. We're looking at Psalm 40 verse 3. Psalm 40 verse 3. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Notice that once again, a highway for our God. Psalm 62, we're looking at verse 10. Psalm 62, looking at it from verse 10. Go through, go through. The gates prepare ye the way of the Lord. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord proclaimed unto the ends of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. The redemption cometh, the healing cometh, the victory cometh. Behold, the salvation cometh. Behold, this reward is with him, and his work before him, and he shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out a city not forsaken. You see that again in verse ten, the highway, and the highway is unto the Lord and for the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 16 verse 17. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. This year there's going to be preservation. And there's going to be progress for everyone in Jesus name. This is a new year and the very first service in the new year. You are always first, and it's wonderful you are here. And I pray that the first fruit of this year will come to every one of us. But you know, if we're going to see something new, and I believe we're going to see something new this new year, we want to walk in the King's Highway so we can have the blessing and the breakthrough. That's why I read all those passages to you, so that we can have the highway of the Lord, and then we can be the new people walking in that new path that leads us to new blessing as well as new breakthrough. I want to speak to you on the new man on the king's highway. The new man on the king's highway. By the way, who is the new man? Because if you're going to have something new, and you're going to make this year a new year, a happy year, a prosperous year, the things of old must not follow us to this new year. We shed them off. We throw them off. We cast them off. And we say, it's going to be a new year. Therefore, I'm going to be a new man. The new man on the king's highway. Who is the new man? The new man has a new attitude. A new attitude. That means the attitude of old is not going to be the attitude of this new year. It, the new man has a new beginning. A new beginning that is to forget the past. You say, I don't care what kind of heartache or sorrow or body or mountain I had in the past year. I'm going to have a new beginning. The new man has a new courage. And then you face this new year every day, day to day, and time to time, and week after week with a new courage. And the new man has a new direction. You're not following the old direction anymore. The direction you used to walk, the path you used to walk, the life you used to live is a new direction. And the new man has a new expectation. He says, I'm expecting something new. No disappointment this year. 
no heartache this year, no or un unanswered prayer this year. There's a new expectation, and the new man has a new focus. He focuses on something new. He says, this is a new year, and because of that, my focus is going to be new. A new focus, the new man has a new guide. The person that guided us before and guided us into trouble, guided us into tears and guided us into sorrow, guided us into things we didn't want. And the kind of mind that guided us, the kind of ideas that guided us, the kind of opinions that guided us, and they just led us astray. And we say for this new year, there's going to be a new guide. Then there's going to be a new hospitality. Hospitality. You give cold water to those who are thirsty, and you give food to those who are hungry. A new kind of just taking care of people. Because if you take care of enough number of people, you'll find somebody taking care of you. That's why you say this year there's no selfishness. This year there's no stinginess. There's going to be new hospitality. If you help people, be hospitable to people, help be helpful to people, you're going to find that people will also love you and they will help you. There's going to be a new interpretation this new year. You know, what, what normally makes us uh, do something wrong is that the things that happen to us, we give the wrong interpretation. And the old interpretation, ah, he doesn't love me because he's more smiling at me. No, he loves you. He just has a personal problem he's thinking about and he's not looking your direction. Have a new interpretation this year. And it is that new interpretation that gets you into a new action and a new habit and a new disposition and a new lifestyle. A new interpretation. There should be a new journal. A new journal. A journal is a diary. That means every day, as you pray from December retreat, from the December retreat, and then you're still praying every day and praying in every service, and then you have all this journal, you have this diary, thank God that prayer is answered. You mark that that prayer is answered. As one prayer is answered, you have another prayer request, another desire, another request you are making to the Lord. You have a new journal. There's a new key that you have this year. And it is a new key that opens the door for the new year. And some people don't understand the old key will not open the new door. The new key is the what is suitable for the new door. Because this year, the Lord is going to set a door before you. And it's going to be a year of blessing, a year of breakthrough. But remember, it's the new, it's the new door because it's the new year. And it's only a new key that will open that a new look. You look differently. If you used to look morose and sad, as if the whole world is on your back, as if all the problems of the world are on your shoulder, and then you used to look so down and dejected and rejected and gloomy with a long face this year, cheer up because there's going to be a shower of blessing upon you. There's going to be a new look and a new mind, a new mind. The way you think, and the way you carry yourself depends upon what you're thinking about. And if you think about trouble too much, trouble will say somebody is looking for me, okay, I, I see him there, he's thinking about me, I am coming. You're not going to think about trouble. You're not going to think about problem. You think about solution and you think about joy and happiness. Because what you think about most of the time, that's what comes. And what you meditate about most of the time, that's what is attracted to your life. It's, a, it's the law of attraction. That's what they call it, that you're thinking about. You're thinking about it. Have you ever think, thought about this? You're thinking of somebody, and you think about him, think about him, think about him. All of a sudden, the phone is ringing. Who is that? It's so-and-so. What? I was just thinking about you. Well, that's how life was. Think about him and he's going to call. And you think about the wrong thing and the wrong person and those wrong things and wrong people are going to come. But this new year, a new mind, a new nature, a kind nature, a loving nature, a gentle nature, a meek nature, a humble nature, a new nature, and a new object. A new object you are looking for. I'm not looking for the object of last year that is gone. I'm looking for a new object so that I can have a new life, a new enthusiasm in life, a new patience with people. Patience with people. You know, sometimes you are patient with yourself, but you're not patient with your children. Patient with yourself, you're not patient with your wife. Patient with yourself, you're not patient with your neighbors. But a new 
shares that you are not demanding this must happen now, this must happen now, you'll be firm on yourself and you'll be loving and kind on other people. And then you're asking new questions. You're not asking the old, old question. Why is everybody always against me? Why is this and why is this? Turn the question around. What are they looking for? They are trying to get my attention. What are they looking for? What should I do for them that will make them happy? And what is the request they are making? That person that is doing that thing is doing it because he's trying to get your attention. Give him some attention and ask a new question, a new relationship new relationship this year. That's what is going to make the year new when you have this new relationship and you smile, you carry a smile everywhere you go and then you touch somebody's life and then you are nice to everybody around. Don't matter, it doesn't matter what you do. Just maintain that new relationship. It's not the other person that is going to make the relationship new. You are the one to create that new relationship in new sincerity. When you smile, make it sincere. When you give somebody something, make it sincere. Because, you know, people can tell when you're giving them something. If you give them with the left hand, they know, they understand. If you give them with a frown, they understand. If you give them with hypocrisy, they understand. Give them something with sincerity. A new tongue. A new tongue. Not criticizing anybody anymore. and Not coaching anybody anymore. Not slandering anybody. This new year is going to be a year of love. And it's going to be a kindness, a year one. Way. You understand the weaknesses of other people, the shortcomings of other people, the background of other people, and some things they're struggling about in their lives. And they try their best to get it corrected. And so you say, I'm going to be patient with them. I'm not going to, you know, cut them down, slander them, criticize them. I'm going to have a new tongue this year, a new unity between parents and children, between husband and wife and the family, a new unity unity in our schools, in our government, in our church, everywhere we go, a new unity and a new vision. I see something new. You must see something new. And you're going to have something new in Jesus' name. A new walk with the Lord. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, give me grace today to walk in obedience and righteousness with you. A new x-ray, a new x-ray. And you know what happened in the past? You only thought about, you know, photograph. You didn't talk about, you didn't think about x-ray. There's a difference between photograph and x-ray. When you take a photograph, you see your face, and then you might see your clothes. You don't see too much in a photograph. You see, the, the face of a person doesn't make him pass exam, and the, you know, whatever it is you see in the photograph doesn't make a successful career. It's the x-ray. X-ray the heart, X-ray the mind, and X-ray the spirit. When you X-ray what is inside, and you're not X-raying other people, you're not examining other people, you're not saying, why is she like that? Why is she like that? Why am I like this? What can I change in my life? And when I have a new X-ray every time upon my life, it's going to, it's going to be a wonderful thing. Because this year will be wonderful. I can tell you that already because the Lord is going to do marvelous things in your life in Jesus' name. And then there's going to be a new year. Then there's going to be a new zeal. This year, I will not be cold. I said I will not be lukewarm. You will not be cold. You will not be lukewarm in Jesus' name. This is the new man. You are looking for the new man that is you. And when you have all this activate of the new man in your life, I'm sure that this year is going to be a great year. As we look at this, the new man on the king's highway, we're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, put off the deeds of the old man. Put off the deeds of the old man. Number two, you perform the duties of the new man. Perform the duties of the new man. Number three, pursue the delight of your new master. Perform the duties of the new man and pursue the delights of your new master. Number one, what's number one? Put all the deeds of the old man. Remember, this is a new year. Don't talk like you talked last year. And don't act the way you acted last year. And don't behave the way you behaved last year. Don't do anything the way you did it last year. 
Find a new way of doing things and find a new way of expressing yourself and put off the old. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. Matthew chapter 9. And there we're reading verses 16 and 17. No man put a piece of new clothes onto an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it up, take it from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. That's how to preserve the blessings of the Lord this year, new year, new man, new attitude, new action. All the old is gone in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 5. It tells us to put up the old. Put up the old so that you can put on the new. I'm sure we do that every day. Every time you want to put on a new dress, you have to put up the old dress. Every time you want to put on old new shoes, you have to put off the old shoes. Every time you want to wear new socks, you have to put off the old socks. And every time you want to, you know, go to a new place, you've never gone, you have to wear a new look. And it is that newness that actually makes everything new. And this year is going to be new. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, and all in it affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. Thank God that's only of the old. I said that's of the old. And they are gone in Jesus' name. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walk, that's past tense, past tense, walk some time when ye lived in them, but now also put off, put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Have you ever heard it? They say, practice makes perfection. Practice makes what? That means, whatever you do and do and do and do again will become a habit. And then you do it, you just do it, even without thinking sometimes. You know, if you're always angry at your children, they do a little thing, you're angry. Something has fallen down mistakenly, you're angry. And if you get angry and get angry and get angry repeatedly, you'll be an angry man, an angry woman, an angry child, and everything around you will be frowning at you because you're an angry personality. Put it up this year. This year, no anger. And then it says, and wrath, wrath is, you know, when you make fire. And you're not making the fire in the kitchen, you're making the fire inside your heart. And your heart gets hot. It gives high blood pressure, that malice, and that wrath, and that anger, and that irritation. It gives high blood pressure because you're making the fire inside you every time. And everything is burning. And then it says, and malice, malice is, you know, when somebody has done something against you, maybe they do it mistakenly or deliberately many years ago, maybe just last year, old year, and then you carry that into, into the new year. And you see the person this new year, you cannot smile, you cannot, you know, wait and say, Happy New Year, how are you today? And you're carrying the feeling of the old year into the new year.